Hey everybody, it's Casey here at Sierra and Flying Tackle, back again with another tying video for you. And today I'm going to show you how to tie the Skip Nymph. Uh, this is an awesome, awesome pattern to have on the box uh, for imitating any of your Calabatus mayflies. So hang out, stay tuned, I'm going to show you how to get this one done. Okay, so to tie this bad boy, I've got an RX FW561, that's a traditional nymph hook, uh, barbless. Um, for this instance I'm going to use a size 14. Um, tie this in a variety of sizes obviously to match the hatch um, you know 12s, 14s, 16s are good sizes to have sometimes I'm going to need a little bit bigger a little bit it's like a size 10 um, could definitely save the day but yeah good hook to start with got it fast and tightly into the jaws of my uh, Dyna King here and for thread I'll be using uni thread uh, 8 aught in the color 10 uh, so like you always see me do tie your thread in And then just lay down a quick base covering that hook shank. You can always say that's the foundation for our fly. So you're going to see me use this material quite a bit in this fly. Um, I'm going to be using some bleached uh, ringneck pheasant tail, uh, bleached ginger by Wopsy. So I'm going to select a small clump that will cut off the stem here, sort of like that six to eight kind of fibers in size. And the tips don't line up when you take these things off, when you cut them off the stem. So I'll always, not that they have to be totally even, but I'll just even those tips up before we tie them in. And that's going to be the tail for this mayfly nymph. Now there's going to be, use a lot of this material in this fly. Yes, you can definitely trim it off here and reuse this for a later application in the fly. Why I'm not going to do this is that this is just allows me to tie a nice uniform body throughout the fly. I'm not going to have any big bumps or clumps in there that are going to throw the proportions off and make this thing look funny. Um, to me, I mean, when I'm looking in my fly box, the fly that I'm grabbing first is always the one that's the nicest tied, streamlined, you know, not the not the Franken one that's in there that uh, got tied at 2.30 in the morning after, uh, after a few beverages. But, uh, yeah, I mean, not to say that those don't work, but uh, I like a nice tied fly, and uh, this is kind of a little tip to sort of make that happen. So we'll wind that forward, and I'm going to cut it off, you know, a good ways from the eye, not to crowd it. There's going to be a big ball of dubbing here at the end, so it's going to cover and do that kind of stuff up. So my tail's tied in. I'm going to bring my thread back. And from here, I'm going to take some uh, UTC Ultra Wire in the color amber, and it's going to be size small. And this will be the rib on the abdomen of the pattern. Again. Laying it down, covering the majority of the shank, just to keep everything neat and streamlined. Now for the shell back on the abdomen. If that piece that you trimmed off is long enough, by all means go ahead and use it. But what I've got here isn't going to be long enough. And I want a little bit more than I had for the tail. So if I had around, you know, six fibers, kind of eight to ten. It's kind of a guess there that I'm kind of going with. These don't need to have the tips lined up. And what I'm going to do here is just because at the base of the fiber, or at the base of these fibers, it's going to be wider than at the tips. I'm going to tie it in by the tip. Those can be a little bit brittle, so I just give them a quick trim. And just like on the natural insect, this will taper from narrow to wider. For the body on this fly, we'll use Hairline Ice Dub in tan UV. Um, really, really like this dubbing on this fly. Gives the fly a little bit of a flash, um, which can imitate um, the nymph 
uh, gassing up just like a coronamid would. Uh, it's quite uh, common to see these all shiny in the water before they hatch as uh, they've, they've got a bunch of gas in there to help float them up to the surface. Um, something that the fish can definitely key in on. So we'll take our dubbing and just twist it right on. No dubbing loop necessary for this pattern. And I'm just going to make a nice skinny rope here as we don't want to have this too fat. Wind that forward, dubbing our abdomen, starting thinner, getting thicker as we go. And reuse that for the thorax. I'm going to leave, I got about two thirds of the hook shank dubbed up. So now I'm going to take that piece of pheasant tail that I tied in and we're just going to pull that forward creating a shell back over the back of the abdomen a couple of wraps to tie that in and then I'm just going to pull it tight and just secure it in place with another couple of wraps and then we will trim that off from here I'm going to rib the abdomen with that amber wire. few wraps to secure that in both sides of the wire and then we'll just helicopter that piece off. Sorry if this shakes the camera, I forgot my tripod. Now for the wing case and the legs, again another clump of the pheasant tail and again more than what we had for that shell back. So you can see how short the tips come up on this side compared to that. So we want to even them up again. It again, doesn't have to be perfect, but the fly will be much more uniform in the end. If you take half a second and try and straighten those out a little bit. There, got those tips looking a little bit better. Now, I'm going to tie them in with the tips pointing backwards. And I want those to line up to be uh, just about to the back of the hook there. Right to the bend. I'm going to tie that in as a wing case. Uh, you know what? Let's fix those a little bit. See how long they are there and how short they are there? Needs a little bit more attention. Lay those down again so they go about to the end of the bend of the hook. A couple of loose wraps, just give it an eyeball. Yeah, I like how that looks there. So we'll secure that down. And again, trim that flush. So for the thorax, we'll take that same 10 UV ice dub. And this, again, we want to be a little bit thicker than the abdomen just to carry on that natural taper. And then I'm just going to wind that back to make sure that there's no gap in between um, the abdomen and the thorax. Bring that forward just shy of the eye. Now I'm going to take those tips, pull them forward, 
hold that in place with my thumbnail there. Pull it all down tight again so it lays tight over that shell back. And now what I'm going to do to imitate the legs is we're going to split these roughly in half. And secure them in place with the tying thread so they're pointed back towards the point of the hook. And this will just imitate legs. Manipulate them however you like to get them to sit into place. Give ourselves a few inches of thread to work with. Whip, whip, whip finish. A dab of glue. And you have yourself a very, very effective mayfly nymph. Also known as the skip nymph. I'll tease this dubbing out a little bit just to make it look like this fly's breathing in the water. And again, just to give it a little bit more kind of leggy sort of action. But this is a fly that I'll tie in a number of sizes, a number of colors. Like this is a great color. Uh, for those light marl bottoms, um, as well as in streams. <clears throat> tie these in a darker brown, tie them in olive as well. Um, phenomenal pattern for both the lakes and the rivers. Um, in the rivers, I tend to weight them a little bit more, not that I don't fish them weighted in the lakes, but what I'll do is I'll tie these in a variation where it's unweighted like this, um, works well as an emerger or just under the surface. I'll tie them with a little bit of lead wire under the thorax as well, just to help things sink a little bit. And then I'll tie them with a bead head as well too, um, like a little copper bead, a little gold bead, um, again, just to help things get down. Um, particularly effective in the river with that bead head, um, just, you know, faster currents, helps things drop. But definitely a worthwhile pattern to have. Um, I think you're going to like this one a lot. Fish it hard, uh, fish it with confidence, and uh, let us know how it works for you. Uh, if you like these videos, give us a like, uh, hit that subscribe button, share it with your friends, and uh, yeah, feel free to come, or send us an email or drop any comments down below. If you want to find these materials, we'll have everything linked to our shop, www.c-run.com. Check us out online. Always here to help you if you guys need a hand. Thanks for watching the video.